Plenty riding on the outcome of this match. Melbourne are looking to shore up a semi-final spot, while for Brisbane, they're desperate for three points to keep their season alive. Melbourne victory hosting Brisbane Raw round 10 of the W League. Good afternoon, I'm Stephanie Brands. Welcome back to Lakeside Stadium where there's a sense of deja vu about this fixture. Last season's grand final featured these teams on this ground, but neither side has had an easy road since then. Both found some form last week after a run of poor results, but the question is who will be able to produce that again today? Now, of course, the round is already underway and three games on Saturday produced a whopping 16 goals. Sydney FC all but snuffing out Adelaide United season, a draw between the Newcastle Jets and Canberra United meant that Perth Glory kicked off their match against the Wanderers already as minor premiers. But their 5-0 win merely confirming that spot and a home semi-final. So Perth 10 points clear at the top. Sydney and Canberra level pegging behind them. Melbourne victory currently hold the last final spot but they can move to third today with a win. Adelaide and Brisbane still mathematically a chance but for Western Sydney Wanderers the race is now on to avoid the wooden spoon. Well, before we look at today's match, Sarah Walsh, Perth Glory, worthy premiers. Would you agree? Yeah, definitely worthy premiers. Uh, the way they went about this season, Steph, really, the way that they scored their goals, defended, they were the complete package for me, picked up some really good additions uh, in the off-season, but really excited to see the form that they've found this season. Well, of course, the other sides are still chasing their semi-final spots, and you'd have to think that Joe Montemuro would be very relieved to have Lisa Devanna and his young Matildas back. Absolutely, Steph. Look, they're a very strong side. They're missing Gemma Simon today. She's out with a virus, but as I I mentioned uh, very strong in the midfield and you see quickly she'll probably play up top today uh, she's been exciting for me this season obviously to have Devana and check about uh, I guess adds I guess the strength and, and solidarity they've had most of the season well Hannah Brewer moved south this season to join the victory and she caught up with Peter Wilkins a short time ago to talk about that change of scenery yeah, look, I've moved down here um, to Melbourne to be with better players and better my footballing career. And I think, you know, there's no other way of doing that without playing with experienced players. And, yeah, I've, I've achieved that so far. Now, what about this game today? Great magnitude because of what can happen with Brisbane. They can be virtually knocked out. You have to keep winning as well. Does that change the way you're approaching it? Yeah, look, we, we approach every game, um, you know, exactly the same. It's going to be a tough game um, no matter who we're playing. And, you know, these next few games we've got um, are a must-win game for us. So, yeah, we're just going out there with the same mentality as it was the grand final. How about Brisbane, Walshy? They're finally back on the right side of the scoreboard last week. How do they keep that going now to give themselves a shot at finals football? Look, they need to win every game uh, from here on out, so that, that would definitely weigh over their heads. Um, they have a strong side again, but look, uh, missing Alloway and uh, Kellen Knight, which is going to be very difficult to, I guess, replace those spots. So interesting to see how Willer and Popovic go in those positions. Well, Emily Gilnick also spoke to Wilco a little earlier about what the focus has been for the Raw ahead of this one. Well, I think the main focus is um, just to come out there with a winning mentality and deliver the same amount of quality as we have over the previous two weeks. And with the same belief, I think we just got to really optimise on the opportunities going forward and attack their weaknesses and really dominate um, against their strengths. It's a massive game. You're not in this position. You haven't been in this position before for Brisbane. Is that creating a tension? Um, there is a little bit of tension. Um, but I think, you know, we've, we've got enough talent in this team and we've been together for a while and, you know, we're looking to just shred them apart today. And I think if we all just come together, we'll get the three points and just right from the whistle. Well, the last meeting here at Lakeside Stadium brought Melbourne victory their first trophy. A win here today could dump their opponents out of the running. Should make for fascinating viewing to take us through it. Let's head up to Peter Wilkins in commentary, who'll be joined by Sarah Walsh for kickoff. A very good afternoon and welcome to Lakeside Stadium on a day of high magnitude for particularly the Brisbane Roar. Never in the history of the W League have they missed the finals. They've won the Premiership twice. They've won the Championship twice. They've never finished lower than fourth if they draw or lose today. They will be out of the finals for the first time. They're going in. They're missing a couple of key players. As we heard at the top of the program, will that make a difference today? Day. Can they dig deep and find some raw-like behaviour and come up with a surprising victory against Melbourne victory? It's game on. 
The referee, Kate Jackowitz, today, Sarah Walsh. It's got to be tough for Brisbane today. We could sort of sense it in that interview with Emily Gilnick that there has to be some sort of tension there. You've got to go win, 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 and still hope that results fall your way. So really, they've just got to concentrate on playing a game of football and worrying about the end result later. Oh, exactly right. And depending on which angle you look at it from, I think if you're uh, Melbourne Victory, I think Brisbane Roar are the last team you want to play. They're really playing, uh, I guess, uh, to, to stay in the comp, but really have nothing to lose as well. Now, busy goad, fresh from a uh, wonderful experience with the young Matildas up in Asia. We'll have a look at those score lines, but there were some incredible score lines, and BD Goad was the central figure with four goals. Rachel Quigley, her last appearance here, resulted in a superb goal too. The volley, which would be a candidate for goal of the year, so they do have goal scorers, not to mention uh, Lisa Devanna, who just celebrated her 30th birthday a couple of days ago. The evergreen performer at club and international level, and uh, there is Devanna chasing back to be involved very, very early on. On. No Elise Kell on night, no Laura Alloway. They are two massive losses, though, for the Brisbane side. Lots of history in those two players, lots of experience. Oh, huge losses for this uh, Brisbane Royal oh, team. Chance here for Rasso. Through, shoots. Oh, what a score! What a goal so early! That is a start and a half for Brisbane. Just when we're reflecting on Melbourne, Bree Davey has to pick the ball out of the net. Hayley Rasso has come up with her version of goal of the year with a beautiful spiriting through the defence and the shot par excellence to finish. Oh, you can see her first touch on this wasn't great, but she's really set her up, set herself up to have this first shot, hitting it far corner. She's hit it sweetly. Absolutely. We see Bree Davey coming back in for Demoscu, who's been so good in goal. Really, she, she couldn't have done anything about that. It was struck so sweet. Hayley Rasso with a spectacular start and just the start for Brisbane Roar today, having to win this game. And gee, uh, given the history of the team, as I mentioned, with their championships and grand finals and never having missed the finals, uh, they lost the grand final here last year, 2-0 to Melbourne victory. They can make a statement today, even if they aren't to make the finals, they can still revive some memories, stir the emotions. Oh, exactly right. And to be honest, over uh, this, this previous season, haven't really seen Brisbane go up early, so it's a, it's a good start for them. They put themselves in a good position, but really haven't been able to perform for 90 minutes. So we'll get to see if they can do it today. Well, that's been their Achilles heel so far this year is goal scoring only once in the history of the competition have they scored fewer than 20 goals in the season proper. And that was way back in 2010-11. They actually won the competition that year with just 17 goals. Uh, this year they've uh, languished on 12 goals, now 13. And really given the strike power in the side, the likes of Tamika Butts, Emily Gilnick and others, uh, that's uh, not too many goals for uh, a team with so many uh, teams. So many players, I should say. So much experience. So many Matildas. And what about their huge star mini, Katrina Gorry? Absolutely. Nominated for AFC Player of the Year. That's a tremendous achievement. Is she going to be able to get on the board today? Vedrana Popovic, not too uh, uh, full of spirit at the start of the day. She's a bit crook, got a bit of flu, but she's taking a place in the side, one would say, under a little bit of duress today. So she might be taken to the edge of her fitness. Stephanie Bratz on the edge of the field. Sublime conditions for football. It's warmed up a little bit. It certainly has. It was a bit chilly when we arrived in the Victorian capital, but uh, it certainly warmed up a little bit. About 17 degrees here at Albert Park and not too much breeze to speak of. Now, Melbourne victory. Devanna, a oh, beautiful turn, but she's robbed by a fellow teammate, Claire Polkinghood, who comes back at her and then Devanna. In turn, goes back at her. A Matilda's teammate, Lisa Devanna, Always. scored half a dozen goals. Big goals in world football at World Cup and Olympic level. Always a great matchup, these two. Know each other's game inside and out. See them coming into camp if selected for the Matildas in January. But uh, you, you quickly touched on it, Wilco, the young Matildas. Congratulations to them heading off to the AFC Under-19 Championships next year. To, 
contend for a spot for the World Cup. But I, I'm really interested to see how these young Matildas come out today. And as you see, sometimes post a tournament like that, and, and especially with some of the players we have on the field today, had an excellent tournament. Sonny Franco, Crummer for Brisbane Royal. We'll see Beatty Goad for, for victory. Played really well. Beatty Goad scoring four goals over there. And then Franco and Emma scoring Checker. seven. Emma Checker, sorry. Uh, so they always come back playing with confidence and, and it'll be great to see. Now Devanna almost away. A good interception again. And that's two out of two pretty much for Claire Polkinghorn. Another one of these iron women of the competition playing in her 77th W League appearance or match. And she's also just about matched that at the Matildas level too with 74 Matildas. That's a, that's a lot of matches for your country and a lot for your club. And she's been integral to the success of Brisbane Roar over a long, long period of time. Vedrana Popovich playing it safely back to the German international, the veteran of the World Cup, Stadi Nankova. Uh, it feels like yesterday, Wilco, that uh, Claire Polkinghorn was being put on Abby Wombach as a kid. Uh, I can't remember how old she was, but she was given the huge task of man-marking Abby Wombach years and years ago. Now on 74 caps, it's a, it's a huge achievement for her. Another header from Natasha Wheeler into the side to stitch up the defence in place of Laura Alloway. Tamika Butt, who scored four goals in the last four games. A brace in one of those games, so a good strike rate for Tamika Butt. Beatty go, slightly checked by Katrina Gorry, goes on. Quigley laying it back. Was that onside? It uh, matters. Well, it is offside now. Out of play, that long ball from Checker. Not finding the mark. Joe Montemuro. Melbourne still have some work to do also to try and defend their championship to get into the finals. So a game of great intrigue today. Brisbane taking the early lead and with a depleted side and in a must-win game. It's a good start for them. Oh, absolutely. And Joe uh, Montemuro has had to make one change with Gemma Simon out due to she's on the sideline with the virus. So with that change, you'll see Brewer come in as centre-back. Ellie Reid drop right and Beattie Goat come on to start. I also like Lauren Barnes as, as uh, holding mid rather rather than in uh, as central defence. She played there all last year and she was she was crucial uh, to their success. And another important player, Christine Nairn, who's played with great poise and great diligence for Melbourne victory this year and scored one spanking goal. She got another one up the sleeve today, but the great distributor of the ball too, an unselfish player, a high work rate, very involved. She, and she really compliments the, the players she has around her. You see Nan, she likes to play in that little pocket as a, as a your typical 10, and then with Quigley playing a little bit higher, those two work off each other so well. They really just have a good understanding of each other's game. Well, Hayley Rasso, her third goal for the year. And it couldn't have come at a better time as far as Brisbane's hopes today. A must-win game for Brisbane. Uh, the situation on the table very delicate with Sydney and Canberra joint pegging behind the runaway Premiers in Perth. Melbourne victory currently sitting in fourth position, but we just have a minor hold on that with Newcastle sweating on them. Now high ball in, Aubrey Davy came and then sat back a little bit on her line. Kim Carroll chases out. He's going to lay it back. It's taken out of play by Quigley. Throw in Brisbane Roar. Linda Wilson looking for a similar performance to last week from her side. It hasn't been a great year. Tamika Butt, though, has been in form recently. Good news for Alan Stadgick, who'll be watching today. The ball tucked back inside. Butt drives. Can't quite get there. Corner kick, though. Characteristic to make a butt play. Oh, absolutely. A first touch set her up here, and it was a cheeky one at that. Earned a, earned a team a, a corner. Just quickly mention, Wilco, these uh, these players out here are playing for much more than W League points as well with uh, the first camp, camp, Matilda's camp, looming in January. Now, butt to take the corner. And uh, it's a high-floating... Corner, the header up was oh, Natasha good. Wheeler. Not a bad effort, but uh, couldn't direct it on target. Oh, 
played through, ladies. Come on, come on, keep the playing last time we were here in the television match, Perth scored a 3-1 victory. It was a well-supported game in terms of the viewership. Over 100,000 people watching around the nation, which was uh, terrific. And the game did produce some spectacular saves from Cassie Domofsky, who's gone back to her bench role today. But uh, what a player to have on your bench. Bree Davey will be challenging for her Matilda's role. Uh, it's good to have the goalkeeping ranks shored up like that at a club. Oh, absolutely. If you look at their bench as well, they have Ella Mastrantonio, who has started pretty much every match this season. She finds herself on the bench as well. Shows uh, the amount of depth that this team has. Brooke Spence, another campaigner for Brisbane. Long history, playing her 76th W League game as well. Hit to score a goal, but the defender is absolutely resolute down that right side and likes to go forward. But she's a decided influence on Brisbane's fortunes over the years as well. A very, very composed player, Brooke Spence. Now a youngster, perhaps looking for a central defensive role, Emma Checker. Oh, that's a, that's a brain snap from Bree Davies. She, uh, she rescues the ball, and now she's, uh, she's caught and uh, releases to Checker. Oh, it's a bit of a bumble -a back for Melbourne victory, and they're going to get the throw in. Yeah, not a great passage of play here. It was just a little bit too casual for my liking. Bree Davy, I don't know if she, there might be a little bit of nerve settling in. Uh, she has been on the bench with that injury for a while. Yeah, she was in the walls in that game too. It was the television game as well a few weeks ago. And she popped four really savage knocks. Now Crummer will rather Gillick with the turn. Looking for Russo at the far post. Katrina Gorey tries the shot. And it's blocked by Hannah Brewer and she just rifles it down the pitch. Hocking horn involved. Only as far as Catley and lays it beautifully on the deck to Devanna. Searching again, but not finding too much room so far. Devanna. Angra pushes it out in turn. Well, both defences getting themselves into knots at various times. Brisbane with the early lead. Twelve and a half minutes gone in the grand final replay. Brisbane 1, Melbourne nil. And Melbourne in the history of the competition has only beaten Brisbane Raw once. That was in the grand final, so a decisive moment to come up with the victory earlier this year. It was 1-1. In fact, not so long ago, just a few weeks ago up in up in Brisbane. Beatty Goad playing it back to Ellie Reed. Good run, good lead made by Quigley. Another great ball from Barnes. Surrenders possession. Crummer with a good touch out to Butts and the chase back. Comes in turn from Checker. Uh, holding it up. And the square ball to Gorey. A little bit of room. Brings it down. And Spence with the overlapping run. Gorey again. Melbourne try to organise themselves. Emily Gielnick. Russo. Gielnick. Tries a speculator from long range. It's a really good passage of play from Brisbane Raw, and you can tell Haley Razzo's on today with her touches. Really looking to beat Steph Catley out on the right there. A little bit of a nothing ball forward. And Wheeler, very composed defender, belying her years, 19 years of age. And there she has Quite a bit of experience with the Brisbane Raw from a substitutes position and also starting position. And she won't be overawed by the task at hand today. Catley with a little bit of room. An early ball is a beauty to Nan. That one well, it sailed over a head. It looked as though it was going to hit the mark. Nice thought, though, from Catley. Reed chases onto it. She measures the cross. Easy pickings for Claire Polkinghorn. Barnes drags it down. What about the goal she scored in the grand final last year? She ever picked that dose today. It was a strike from about 20 metres, a cannonball. Barnes. And the energy from Brisbane apparent. The pass poor. Russo scoots away. Crummer trying to stay on side. And a little bit of miscommunication. Russo would probably have done better to take the selfish approach. Yeah, a bit of a bad decision making then in the end. I think, uh, yeah, as you, as you said, Wilco 
form that she's in today. She needs to just take that and back herself. Oh, Devanna sparkling. The young legs still going well. And this is good play from Melbourne. Can go keep it in. She will indeed read in support. And the pass well behind her. Misdirected. And Brisbane now can break. But although Melbourne in saying that have plenty of defence back. And Carroll loops the pass and that's a task for Tamika Butt. Check her across to put it out of play. Brisbane on the serve and we haven't seen too much from Melbourne so far. Tamika Butt, another player with an incredible strike rate in the competition. Three hat-tricks, 67 or 71 matches, 38 goals for Tamika Butt and she's in grand form again with five this year. Yeah, she, and being in a struggling team, five goals is pretty good. She's always tried her best, and you can see that just just hasn't been their year in terms of you know finding their rhythm and. Oh, Polking on. What about the first time shot? Not bad at all from Emily Gilnick. Didn't quite get the power. The idea was right, Bree Davy. A comfortable save. Yeah, luckily for Melbourne Victory, she didn't connect. Emily Gilnick quite often in the super sub role, finding herself as a starter today, and she'll lap up that task. Been plenty of movement from Gilnick early on in proceedings. Brisbane are pressing really well today. You can see all over the park. Melbourne have been under pressure, and you just mentioned they really haven't been able to keep possession of the ball, and when they have, it's been in bad areas. Wheeler. Dory's available under pressure. Extremely congested. Gielnick. Dory leaps high. Beaten though. By Jackson. Scored a hat-trick here a few weeks ago. Her first hat-trick in the competition. With a high work rate in the middle of the park. Gorry brings it down. The interception made by Brewer in turn, though. Here's Gorry. Twinkle-toed, and the shot balloons away. Not a bad effort, though, from Minnie Me, Katrina Gorry, applauded by Belinda Wilson. Look at the tight touches she, she has here. There's about four players she beats, and rightly so, set herself up to have a shot. Didn't connect well enough with the ball, but really she sets herself up with uh, those small touches, and she's running at speed. It's so hard to do. I think there's some of the moves that uh, put her in a position to be nominated for AFC Player of the Year. She did that so well at Asia Cup. We've seen her score off a couple of the back of those. Yes, quite a bit of controversy that uh, Ante Kovic, the Western Sydney keeper, is that offside? It is. Quigley, about a metre offside, wasn't nominated considering his sparkling form in the Champions League. But the representative for Australia at the big awards will be Katrina Goring. Good luck up against a couple of Japanese players. I am Miyama. And Kawasumi, who were uh, devastating at, uh, at Asia Cup. And I wouldn't be surprised if one of those two picked the award up. It's still a, a great achievement for Katrina Goring to be mentioned next to those names and well-deserved. Barnes. Vanner was just about to spread Eagle the defence out on the left with one of her paralysing runs. The run wasn't picked up. She wants to get back on the score sheet. Lisa Devanna, a couple of games out, suspended this year due to a rough field situation at a, a club function that was a little bit untidy. But she'd be high on Alan Stadgett's list for next year's World Cup. Still uh, effervescent. Oh, that's a good run. Here's Kramer. And a little bit of defending to do for Catley. And the uh, loopy uh, sort of half back pass. Probably didn't no. qualify as that. She was trying to put it out of play. Oh, great ball. And as you mentioned, great run from Kramer. Davey with a, a long drop kick. Devanna, the first time touch, down to Quigley, to Catley. Striding out in that position, Devanna almost was a shade offside. Oh, Quigley with a first time shot at ricochets and Ungra tidies it up. Popovich was back. I don't think Steph Catley's uh, crossed this where she wanted to. She's hooked it a little bit. Yeah, it didn't, didn't work out too badly, but Quigley, yeah, as you mentioned, tried to hit it first time. 
was so dangerous. It only takes one of those moments and could find Angra picking that out of the back of the net. She's, she's another player that uh, I imagine could be a bolter for the camp in, in January, in my opinion. Plenty of decisions to make. Devanna, a bit of frustration. It's not unusual. She plays the game on a very high emotional level. Steph, a lot of talk down there on the benches. It's actually been pretty quiet down here. Uh, Joe Montemiro is pacing his technical area. Very interested spectator. Oh, Rasso with another chance. Over she goes. Good movement, though, again from Brisbane. Oh, I think she should have done better here, and she's tried to side foot. Uh, sorry, she's tried to hook that around on the on the instep. Ellie Reed's given her a lot of space there. Really had to make up for it in the last second. The Melbourne defence really need to be tied on Razo today. Quickly. Neat ball for Goat to chase two. Now she strides out deceptively quick. Can she get the shot on goal? The defence gathers at the right time. And that's a good effort from Claire Polkinghorn supporting Natasha Wheeler. Throw in. Melbourne victory trailing by the goal. Ellie Reed to Goad. Confidence rising on every performance at the young Matildas level and also the club level for the Lauriston girls student, a former cross-country runner. She's great to watch when she gets moving on the pitch. Quite fleet of foot, deceptively quick. And she's fooled many a defender with that subtle change of pace. Yeah, you can see she fooled uh, Popovich there, getting caught out a little bit. But you're right, she's deceptively quick. It's She uh, makes up ground so quickly. I'm not sure if her off-the-mark off the step is quick, but she, she gathers momentum as she gets going. Wheeler, a little bit of time. Popovich. Also been suffering from an ongoing complaint of, of Achilles tendon injury, inflammation there. Oh, without jinxing uh, Brisbane Raw just yet, Wheeler and Popovich are doing a very good job out on the left here for Alloway and KK. Callum Knight. Oh, Catley is taken down. There's a yellow card and no hesitation from Kate Jackowitz, the her experienced grand final referee. The card came straight out. We'll have a look again. And uh, oh, it was an ugly sort of foot up from Larissa Crummer. She's coming with the studs up there, so no doubt yellow card straight away. by far one of her best seasons we've seen her play I think Crummer she's really struggled in previous seasons to solidify that starting position we see her starting today but her form's just been much more consistent across the board man lays it off for Catley Catley the early ball just over the head of Jackson streaming forward Lauren Barnes we saw a similar cross bring some dividends with a sparkling volley from Quigley, pushing the back from Razo, chasing back. And a free kick goes the way of Melbourne victory. Uh, nothing sinister in this for me, but look, look how uh, BD Go goes down. There's really nothing, nothing of her. The flyweight. Nan overseeing the situation. They're strung out on the edge of the 18-yard box. Floats one in onto the head of Pockinghorn. Nirvana trying to get the hoof on the ball. Or quickly, I should say. Now it's thrashed clear. Catley chases. And the game just in a little bit of a lull at the moment. Brisbane taking the early lead. But both teams really marking each other tightly. That's grand final like tension in the air. Yes. Uh, 
I say, guides it across and a throw into Brisbane Raw. Popovich, Carroll, pressured by Quigley. Room on the right with Spence. Ockinghorn goes back the other way to Wheeler. Melbourne just sitting back on the heels a little bit. And very congested. Catley drags it down nicely. Devanna cuts back inside, attended by two, three. The feet roaring away. Good play to Catley. Looks up, goes far post to Goad. And Popovich chases with Goad. And she does well to keep it in. Reed. And a nothing ball. She was looking for Nan. Nonetheless, a promising build up for Melbourne Victory. One of their better movements of the day. A lot of them emanating from that left side with Catley screaming downfield and she's going to be a great proposition for Matilda's coach, Alan Stadgick, whirring away down that left side. They've got a couple of good left-sided players, Elise Kellon Knight, Steph Catley. Absolutely, and we see handball? Katrina Gorry's found a lot of ball today and not being picked up by Jackson quick enough. I mean, good players will find space, but she's really just been able to roam in the midfield at the moment. And also, uh, see here, Kim Carroll. Spence. Carroll. And Devanna says, I'm coming to get you. And to Wheeler. And that's a poor effort. She knew it right off the boot. Overplayed it. Melbourne will trailing by the goal. No doubt a lot of fascinated viewers across the nation. The teams that have already played this weekend, we're going to have highlights in a goal fest at half time. We'll see Sydney spanking victory over Adelaide. The three-all draw between Newcastle and Canberra and Perth confirming their premiership victory. Yeah, well, in all truth, it was confirmed before they took the field because of other results, but uh, nonetheless a fine way to I'll punctuate that. Gee, that's, that's a solid cool. challenge. It's a lot more dangerous than first thought. She's coming with the studs right up. A lot of momentum. Gory. And Rasa just uh, stumbling underneath the flight of the ball. And so many options in the attacking zone for Alan Stagic. We have talked about it previously. Uh, it's almost an embarrassment of riches in uh, the strike force with Caitlin Ford, Sam Kerr. When you start mentioning them, you're going to leave some out, aren't you? Michelle Heyman, Kate Gill. Ash Sykes. Ash Sykes, Hayley Russo, Tamika Butt, number 10 role. And a lot of those uh, players you just mentioned can play a little bit deeper in the midfield as well. So the versatility of the players today, players are being asked to play in different positions and they can and at a high level. Another bolter might be Dobson for Newcastle, making the score sheet again this weekend. Barnes and Checker. Gilnick and Tamika Butt pressuring with uh, great intent. Spence chimes in, looking for Gilnick. Who's statuesque up front. Good player, good go-to player. Nodded down by Polkinghorn. Too much continuity at the moment. Polkinghorn drags it down. Carroll to Wheeler. Popovich pulls a bit wider. To Melbourne now, pressing. Yeah, the Melbourne are pressing one out at the moment. Lisa Devani, as you can see, pressing the ball there. Need to stay a little bit more compact and defend as a team. Russo turning the defence around again, looking for Butt. Pass had a little too much weight on it. Jackson can't quite clear it. Gilnick. She comes again at the second attempt. Does Amy Jackson to do well. So another with five goals to a credit so far this year. Amy Jackson in the midfield. Go. 
Gorry. Neat touch from Gorry. Likes them from long range. Puts on the pace of the far post ball. Crummer was there. Bree Davey made a lunge. Great effort from Katrina Gorry. Uh, this one had a little bit more curve on than everybody thought. Basically going out for a goal kick, but we've seen so many times those ones going top left actually wasn't that far off. That's a typical four seasons in one day in Melbourne today, early this morning. 10 or 11 degrees, 13 about midday. And now quite a balmy afternoon. Now on site to Ungros, come a long way out of the ground. And they go on to the attack again through Russo. Right on the right side, Crummer's in the centre. Can Gilnick fight her? Far post looking for Butts. It was a good leap from Reed. It needed to be made. Tamika Butt drags it down. Chip over the top looking for Carol, who will get the second bite. And just for the punches, she fashions a clearance. Nan holds it up looking for Devanna. Angra is still playing the sweeper role. Well, that's audacious. Is it going to bring them unstuck? Spence with the interception. Nan thinks about one from long range. Oh, that was optimistic. Angra had made the ground back onto the goal line. Okay, Montemuro surveying and Christine Nan with all her experience would certainly know that that was straight out of the top shelf of optimism. Absolutely. A few uh, yards out further than uh, where we've seen her score earlier on in the season. But they're, they're kind of running out of, op out of options in that final third. If they're not hitting that long ball to Lisa Devana, they just need to be a little bit more creative in the way that they try to penetrate this defence. Here's Devana taking on Spence, overlapping Catley. Catley nipping away. Cool as you like at the back. Gorry with Polking Horn. They haven't cleared it yet, though. Rasso back as well. In Carroll. First time hit to Gilnick. Drags it down neatly to Gorry. There's something opening up for Gorry. She takes on BD Goad. And oh, she was looking for Butt. Melbourne make the interception via Emma Checker. Bright play from Brisbane Roar in turn. Holding the lead, courtesy of the opening gambit from Hayley Russo. 33 enthralling minutes gone so far. 1-0 Brisbane over Melbourne. Good defence there from Lisa Devana. That would have been the third cross in, and that's something that at Victory need to look at. It's just been too easy for Brisbane Raw's wingers to be able to hit these dangerous balls in. Quigley, Jackson, Barnes. Brisbane again with the high press. Checker measuring the pass. Not a bad effort, too. It's given Ellie Reed something to chase. Wheeler only goes as far as Nan with a sparkling turn. The pass didn't match it as quickly he was hustling into the area. Now Gorry in turn. Looks up, threads it out to Spence. This is the most confident I've seen Brisbane Roar on the ball today. Uh, really the movement off the ball really uh, assisting their teammates. And as you can see, when Katrina Gorry picks up the ball in the midfield, she has options off the ball. She has strikers running to the ball off their defenders and, and really creating space for her. And lots of energy continues in the middle of the park as Melbourne can see possession yet again. But there's a challenge and it's rewarded with a free kick. Brisbane with 10 and a bit to go before the break on the attack again. Brewer coming in a little bit overzealous here. Brewer's doing quite well in that central defensive role at this point. And a Brewer nods down again. And she might be called into the fray once more. Yes, Hannah, we heard her at the uh, top of the program singing the praises about her move. And uh, it was quite a sad year. Her nan Betty passed away earlier this year and uh, she sends a big cheerio out to her pop Jack who'll be watching today and uh, cheering her on in that uh, sensitive, central defensive role. Anna Brewer. Might actually give a shout out to my grandma who's just come out of surgery up in Port Macquarie. 
Barbara, hope you're doing well. Russo couldn't find Crummer. And Polkinghorne streaming in to get the head on the ball. Spence, well, that's a task for Russo. And they're both cantering after the ball. Brewer accepting the goal kick. There's that press again. It's just been so difficult for Victory to be able to find space and that continuity on the ball. So when you haven't had the ball for a long time, when you do get it, and we're seeing a lot of panic in the players looking up, they're not able to see a blue shirt and making bad decisions. It's just been really difficult for them this first half, and it's a credit to Brisbane. Quigley, another traveller in terms of uh, clubs, the leading goal scorer. And games played for Adelaide United coming across for a new lease of life, and she's added another dimension to this Melbourne side. Scored some vital goals for so far this year. Quigley and can turn on goal as well, lays it back this time, and she might get the ball at the feet. She does. Try to knit something together. Oh, onside! Off the post from Barnes and back into the hands of Anger. The flag stayed down. It stayed down. I don't know how it stayed down. She's looked a metre offside for me, and we're in a really good position where the commentary box is. Yep. Well, it's definitely offside. But the flag stayed down. It's a powerful header from Reed. Only to the feet of Wheeler. Oh, now with Devano, room in front too. Can she burn Polkinghorn? And uh, they're back, the trio, to stymie her. That's uh, good defence from Brisbane. And that might just run away from even Beaky Goad. It does. Brisbane Roy at this, at this point in time, especially with Lisa Devano, they're winning that psychological battle. It's been really difficult for her to find space today and to minimise the damage she could do in behind. Jackson was calling Barnes towards her and Davanna with a great chase back, robbed by Kramer, who does well to her more senior opponent, returns the favour. Square balls intercepted by Barnes. And both teams in a highly congested midfield. They're playing pretty much 15, 20 metres either side of halfway currently. Russo. Lays it there for Gilnick, but with a little bit of room. Tamika Butts can strike from long range. Gilnick eager to shoot as well. Gallagori, can she find the room? Squares it up. That's a good ball to Spence. And here's Butts in at the near post. Bree Davy dives to save. Another promising build up for Belinda Wilson to survey. Seven. Minutes to go before half time, and Brisbane still holding that one goal advantage, courtesy of Hayley Rasso. And that's been another feature of this year the number of splendid goals. Exponentially, it rises every year, but we've seen probably 10 or 15 candidates for goal in the year already. Oh, High absolutely. quality goals. I really enjoyed the, the goal. We were back here at Lakeside earlier against. Uh, is it Adelaide, sorry? Was it Perth? Adelaide. Adelaide quickly, top left corner on the left foot. On the right corner, sorry. Beautifully uh, timed first time volley. Yes, I think that was, uh, that was Perth. That was the uh, early lead. And then uh, Perth uh, spirit in their response. Brisbane's defence looking very composed. As well. They've got a couple of games to go against Canberra and the Western Sydney Wanderers, and who knows, goal difference could count. Melbourne have just the one game in hand up against Newcastle. Uh, so if Brisbane were to record the victory today to keep their unlikely hopes alive, you'd have to say, it uh, would still put some high pressure on the last couple of rounds of the competition. Melbourne having already played one of those rounds due to their participation up in the Champions League.
Hogging Horn. A distinctive style. Crouching, running powerfully over the ball. And now Russo all alone on the left, but offside. Oh, lucky she's called offside there. Ellie Reid tucked in a little bit too tight and left Razzo too much space. She's not a player you want on the ball with that much space. At some stage during the match, you'd, you'd be sure we're going to see Sunny Franco, who was in sparkling goal-scoring form up in Asia with seven. She scored six of those in one game. And uh, also scored the last time these two teams met. So she's in a rare patch. Oh, she's in devastating Matilda. form. I can't wait to see her come on. We also uh, lucky enough to see Caitlin Friend on the on the bench for Melbourne Victory, and we all know what she can do. She was in devastating form last season. It's unfortunate for her that Quigley's in the same form for Victory. Gielnick looks from long range. Bree Davey watches it sail harmlessly over the bar. So plenty of questions to be answered in the remaining couple of rounds of the W League. Then we're going to see the semi-final action. Perth guaranteed a home semi-final and who knows, it could be a home grand final. Spanking victory overnight. And again, we'll have highlights of that win. Half time. Gorry brought down free kick. Taken to ground by frustrated Amy Jackson in the middle of the park. It's Caitlin Friend. And uh, also Cassie Domovsky, who just had that sensational game last time out, conceded three goals but made four world class saves during the match. And if it was any other keeper in front of her, you'd think she's been, I guess, uh, it'd be understandable to think that she'd be unfairly treated being on the bench. But uh, as we know, Bree Davies, when she's at her best, number one keeper at the moment. Gorry, little chip, delicate. No one there, but Davy. She hoists it out for go to chase. And uh, Spence comes in, Goad and uh, Spence. Well, there was a bit of a trailing foot from Goad, rules Kate Jakowitz. Look, Spence, tenacious campaigner. Hockey <laughs> Horn has Spence. But retreating to try and pick up possession. She's just been out of the game a little bit for the last few minutes as we approach half time. Just a minute or so to go and probably not much time added on. Free kick to Melbourne. Is there a last hurrah for them in this half? Checker picks up Reed. Brisbane still intent. Moving forward, Gorry. And now Devanna sparkling. That's a great run from Devanna. Spence in front. She lays it beautifully for a tap in for Rachel Quigley. That is a response and a half. Magnificently orchestrated. First up the pass, the raking ball that searched out Devanna. And Quigley just soared it in to make it 1 1. Oh, for me, watch Lisa Devanna here. She's held the ball up. Well, well timed. Look at her look up. Waiting for Quigley to make that run. And she's also passed it in a time that's kept Quigley onside. Might not be able to see it from this angle, but she allowed Quigley to, to make that, make those yards up on uh, Claire Polkinghorn. There's really nothing they could do. Perfectly timed ball in. Excellent finish. Rachel Quigley with a, a penchant for scoring at that end of the ground. That was the uh, same goal. She ploughed that beautiful volley in a couple of weeks ago, and now she adds another one. And it's come at a vital time just before half time or right on the stroke of half time but just uh, it was poetry in slow motion almost that brisbane could do nothing about it oh absolutely and hopefully we get to see it on the replay lisa devana she's really just held that ball up allowed quickly to make up those yards she needed to 
She plays that in first time. That's easy pickings for the Brisbane defence. It's a really hard goal for uh, Brisbane Raw to swallow this close to half time. Quinlan, Popovich, Carroll. Have uh, Brisbane got a late reply also. There's a good ball over the top and Gorry chases. Now, Tamika Butts in the centre. She's made the run. It's a bit slow coming across to Gielnik. She turns, lays it back for Carroll. The defence marshals itself at a poor ball to finish it off. Just a couple of minutes extra in the first half. We've already used up one of those minutes. And the bright sunny skies in Melbourne. It is now 1-1. And Montemuro, he'd be delighted with the build up to that goal, the finish and the timing of it. Conversely, Blinda Wilson, she would just be extremely unhappy about that. Been on top for the majority of this match and just one, one transition where Lisa Devana gets out to, to put a perfect cross in. All that good work's come undone. We've got about 30 seconds. Devana again probing, annoying the defence. As only she can. Marissa Grummer infringing it again. Now Christine Nan standing over the ball with Steph Catley. And if they want to take this quickly, otherwise the clock's going to beat them. Now the ball in and just a little nudge on. That's enough. With a head from Polkinghorne out of play. That should be half time. One more throw in for Melbourne. And in fact, they're too slow. Half time called. And a spirited first half. Brisbane enjoying a lot of the, the territory and possession. They've scored the early goal. Melbourne with the late goal. The same time from the end of the half as Brisbane's was near the start. Nadine Hungara, the German World Cup international of great history behind her. Well, there the possession stakes leveled out close Ooh, to half time. We can see balls in the penalty area for me is probably the only difference. Obviously they've had a little bit more possession and they've held the ball better today Brisbane and, and really been better in that final third. They, they've only had one goal to show for those 13 balls in the penalty area but for me are the better team in the first half and it'll be interesting to see how they both come out in the second half. Let's go down to Stephanie Brantz. Yeah, but Katrina, go with me. Many have been instrumental in that first half. It must be frustrating to have Melbourne equalise, but are you proud of the way your side's come out? Yeah, I think we came out strong. You know, we had a fair few opportunities in the first half, so we're hoping to bring that into the next half. For you, uh, personally, uh, congratulations. Uh, nomination for AFC Women's Asian Player of the Year. Uh, what was getting that call like? Uh, it was pretty cool. I um, just opened my emails and it said I was invited, so it, it was, it's pretty cool and I'm so stoked. We're exceptionally proud of you. Go take a break and good luck for the second half. Thank you. Yeah, Katrina Gorey here at Lakeside Stadium where it is one all between Brisbane Raw who are visiting Melbourne Victory. Now, of course, at this point in the season with finals looming close, every point is crucial. So let's see who had wins last week with Georgina Tunney. Brisbane Raw were at home and looking dangerous in the early stages of their huge clash with an inform Lady Reds. Adelaide were chasing four straight wins, but Brisbane's Tamika Butt made her first shot of the day count. Hayley Rasso's been the Raw's constant performer in an erratic season. When she found some room, Brisbane found their second goal in half an hour. Then Butt, who took five rounds to open her scoring account in 2014, proved she's back to her formidable best. Thanks to a length of the field lead-up, she had her fourth goal in three games. So the first of three 3-0 three scorelines for round nine. Adelaide's winning streak stalls while Brisbane finally get into gear and move off the bottom of the table. It took seven minutes for the Newcastle Jets to out-chip Perth Glory and go nil one up, courtesy of captain Emily Van Egmond. But the Glory have one of the best, if not the best, attacks in the league, also one of the most opportunistic. A Claire Coelho fumble became Caitlin Ford's fourth goal this year. 
Now, Samantha Kerr asks questions of every defensive line every time she plays. Is there a player with greater speed or greater skill than her? Well, at the moment, there doesn't appear to be. Kerr's answering goal to grab her brace took Perth to 3-1. Her pace and deftness of touch on show yet again. Elisa Davidio then made it two goals in two weeks and Perth had a three-goal lead. But despite the scoreboard, Newcastle remain a real dark horse in this competition and they reduced the margin to two with this last-minute strike. Another win to the glory, 4-2 over the Jets. And at the rate Perth are scoring, the other top four teams may need to start worrying. It was clear just how much the defending champions had missed Lisa Devanna in the opening five minutes against the Wanderers. Her fast feet gave Captain Catley the first goal of the game. With Devanna back, the victory looked nothing like the team that had lost their last three games. She set up Rachel Quigley just before half-time. And then a very familiar face for victory fans. Their all-time leading goal scorer, Caitlin Friend, is back in Australia and in time for finals football. She was just in time as well to see Devanna once again chip in on the action. 3-0 to the defending champs. Melbourne avoid four straight losses while the Wanderers find themselves back in eighth position. Canberra United were showing sizzling form in the ABC clash with Sydney FC. Sally Rogen scored the first goal in her W League career after some Michelle Heyman magic. Heyman's own athleticism helped her convert Stephanie Oakes's break and she flew high above Alyssa Harris. Canberra on top and in front, 2-0 at the break. Heyman's woman of the match winning performance reached a crescendo when she sang the ball to Oakes, who made it 3-0. But it is rare for Sydney FC to be held to zero and even rarer for Jasmine Spencer to be goalless. She had one last crack at Canberra's defence. But it wasn't to be. 3-0 it stayed and the Green Machine is back on the march towards a home semi-final. The action continuing in the W League. A must-win game for the Brisbane Roar. They were away to a great start with an early goal, but Melbourne Victory have fought back. A second half awaits of high intensity as Brisbane battle to stay in the finals race. Will they miss out for the first time ever? Melbourne with the Quigley goal right on the stroke of half time, levelling it up with Brisbane. Hayley Rasso with a sparkling opener in the second minute of play. Round 10 started on Friday. Sydney coming off a heavy defeat. Had to get back in the saddle, so to speak, and they did so in fine fashion. Nicola Bulger, who was absent at the last encounter, the dummy, dummy was made by Camilleri. Bulger scoring the goal. Oh, in true Sydney FC style, really. Renee Rollison striding forward. She was injured at the end of uh, the match last week, but she managed to recover well and a beautiful finish, angling the shot in the 27th minute for a 2-0 lead. Now there's a corner from Teresa Palas. Nicola Bulger moving in with a fine strike for her second for the afternoon. And then a rare moment, Olivia Price getting onto the score sheet in the 67th minute. That's a great strike. Oh, excellent. Well angled shot. Then uh, with time just about up, Jasmine Spencer with a high strike rate this year showed just why. Another sensational strike. That makes it eight goals from ten games for Jasmine Spencer. Let's hear from Renee Rollison. Coming off last week, losing against Canberra 3-0, um, it's something that we needed and at training all week we've been working hard on, on energy and trying to um, get goals early and we did that today which helped us a lot. Yesterday afternoon in Newcastle, it was Canberra and Newcastle and another high scoring game. Tori Huster setting up Amber Nielsen. What about the goal from Angela Salem? Oh, absolutely gorgeous strike. 13 minutes, an own goal. Ash Sykes and Michelle Heyman combining. Catherine Reynolds, unfortunately, steering it into her own net. 1-1, 11 minutes later. The combination, it's delivered before it delivers again. Ash Sykes to Michelle Heyman. She doesn't miss them from that range. Now you can see when you follow up and you create your own luck like that. Seen it time and time again from Michelle Heyman. 
You mentioned this player was perhaps a smoky. Raleigh Dobson, she shows why. Angela Salem with the corner. Emily Van Egmond, the assist. Raleigh Dobson making it 2-2. Two, two. There was more to come in the 87th minute. Laurie Lindsay set up a goal for Ash Sykes. Canberra might have thought they had this game in the keeping. But two minutes later, Amber Nielsen helped it in. Tara Andrews was there with the header down. The keeper couldn't quite parry it away, resulting in a 3-3 scoreline. Let's hear from Michelle Heyman. I guess we're putting the goals in the back of the net finally, so that's a good start, but letting in some easy go goals as well. So I guess we've got to go back to the drawing board and fix that before next week. To complete the matches played so far in Perth, Sam Kerr, fleet of foot, a fine finish. She's in dynamic form leading into the World Cup year. She had two goals in the space of 35 minutes. Oh, you can just see her finishes, her touches, and the runs in behind the defence. She's devastating, and I imagine leading into the, the finals, most defences are really, really scared of what she's capable of. Now, talk about a finish in the 39th minute. A measured left foot sparkler from Colette McCallum. There was more to come for Perth as they secured the Premiership. The nod on a 4 0 scoreline with Mariana Tabane finishing off the work in the 87th minute. A fine header from Kate Gill consolidating her position at the top of the Golden Boot with 11 5 0 to Perth, sealing the Premiership. Let's yeah, it's nice to actually become, you know, the league champions over all these years that, you know, we've been a bit disappointed, but we've had such a good squad this this um, this season and we gel so well in the field, so it's, um, yeah, it's very exciting. We want to um, keep winning games and stuff like that and show that we we're meant to be up there, not like it's just a flip or anything like that, you know. We've played really well and um, we just got to keep that going. I'll let my callum first half highlights we didn't have to wait too long this was a glorious finish Sarah Walsh oh absolutely you can see she's looked up her first touches has set her up it wasn't great but it was enough to be able to have that shot far left a sparkling goal from Haley Rasso then not quite the meat of the bat on the ball from Emily Gilnick bringing a 19th minute save at the other end Oh, off the crossbar was she offside Lauren Barnes this was beautiful a measured ball across and she made a dynamic run Rachel Quigley off the Lisa Devanna pass for 1-1 at half time a glorious way for Melbourne victory to finish the half the score so far Sydney 5 Adelaide 0 Sydney into second position on the ladder Newcastle and Canberra 3-3 three, three. Perth 5 Blitz the Wanderers nil, and here it is Melbourne and Brisbane 1-1. One, one. On ABC, you can follow all the W League action on iView, the Thursday replay nationally, Facebook, and also Twitter. Confirming the under-19 championship scores, Australia demonstratively good beating Hong Kong. They walloped Singapore and completed their performance up there with a 3-0 win over Vietnam, securing their qualification for the 2015 Under-19 Championship. January 2015. For the first time ever, the AFC Asian Cup comes to Australia. And the ABC will be your official free-to-air broadcaster. To celebrate our commitment, we bring you the two superpowers of Asian football, Japan's Samurai Blue and our Socceroos. International Football Live, November 18 on ABC. Yeah, can't wait for that one. A prelude to the Asian Cup, which kicks off in January. We've got the Samurai Blue hosting the Socceroos at Nagai Stadium in Osaka. What an exciting moment for Australia to prove where they are in preparation for the Asian Cup. Can't wait for that one. And of course, there's someone else who's looking toward Japan, and that's Melbourne Victory women's coach, Joe Montemura, who's got the International World Club Challenge coming up. Before that, you've got another half here, Joe. And of course, the cushion of three points would be very useful as you've only got one match left. How relieved were you to see that goal go in? Uh, very relieved. Uh, we couldn't find any rhythm and uh, you know the first time we actually played through midfield and out and we diagonal pass we got in so uh, it's what we've been working on all year and uh, it's, uh, it just wasn't happening for us. So what did you say at the break? 
A uh, lot of words, a lot of interesting <laughs> words. No, look, our, our structure defensively is OK. We just, uh, we just now need to find some rhythm in attack and we've found some little areas we could probably exploit them and we've just worked on that. Sounds really simple. Joe, good luck for the second half and we wish you all the very best when you head for Japan in a couple of weeks. Thank you, Stephanie. Thank you. Joe Montemuro, the Melbourne Victory coach. And we're just waiting for both teams take their positions. Katrina Gorey, a late arrival. Melbourne won, Brisbane won. So much to play for earlier this year. We witnessed the grand final Melbourne victory with their first championship success. They won that match 2-0. What is going to be the scoreline today? Will Brisbane still keep their hopes alive? They have to score again to do that. They have to win today, given the roundup of matches in the final couple of weeks of the competition. They only have one match left. Melbourne, and that will be up against Newcastle. So one of those two teams is going to make it difficult for Brisbane, or impossible for Brisbane to make it, should they not win today. Gorry looking for the overlapping run. That has too much weight. The run from Tamika Butt down the left side as they look for combination. And another goal. Well, it's uh, Melbourne find themselves in a better position if they had have gone into uh, the second half chasing this match. It obviously changes the way that they would approach the second half. But on level terms here, we'll get to see that they can relax on the ball a little bit more. We might get to see them hold a bit more possession and, and actually try things. Joe mentioned uh, that they did actually find the way to penetrate Brisbane Raw's defence. And it'd be good to see if they can do that more often. For me, it was only Brisbane having that lapse of concentration to be able to give Lisa Devana too much time, and they've been so good up until that point. Another hoisted ball allowed to bounce. Bree Davey has it covered. The advancing Gorry signalling her intentions in the early moment of the second half. She's buzzing around. It'd be a surprise not to see her make a contribution in the second half. They need her operating at full tilt. So too do the Matildas. Hannah Roar with the dancing feet. And Hayley Rasso involved. And again, both teams highly congested. The centre of the field. Both defences playing that high line. And at the other end of Dean Ankara. She's uh, virtually playing in a central midfield role <laughs> at the moment. Almost worthy of a shot. She's about 15 metres out from her own area. Now Brisbane on the attack, far post. A little bit too deep. Bree Davy covers. Now Lisa Devanna. Just caught by Kim Carroll. Are we on the cusp of a little slice of for Brisbane, unwanted history in the W League. If the score remains the same, they will not contest the finals for the first time. And Sydney FC only really secured their position yesterday uh, or on Friday with that 5 0 win. But Brisbane now in totally unfamiliar ground of having to chase it and also hope that results go their way. Even if they win today, they still have to be hopeful that results don't go their way. Devanna searching around and uh, a free kick going the way after that battle for possession. Amy Jackson, the recipient of a yellow card. The longer that this match stays uh, level, it's not good for Brisbane Raw. They do not want to be ch chasing this game 20 minutes out. Beat it, beat it, beat it. Interesting to see when Belinda Wilson will bring on Sonny Franco. Not warming up at the minute. And both these coaches have been very sparse with their introduction of players from the bench. They like the rhythm of the players on the field. So you'd expect we're going to see quite a, a deal of football before a substitution is made. That's the most likely one with Franco in goal scoring form. And you're going to need another goal. There's no, no doubt about that. Absolutely, and possibly a change in formation. Katrina Gorey playing a little bit higher. But Kramer was upfield. There's a lot of work for 
Adriana Popovich, shadowed by BT Goad. Looking for an option. Barnes wheels around to pick up Hannah Brewer. Looking for Devanna. Intercepted by Spence. It's a poor pass by her standards. Catley in turn. Now Barnes again. Oh, Devanna with a rare error. Just lifted the foot. Getting a little bit ahead of herself. She's trying to pick up the ball and face up Brooke Spence. She really has not been able to do that other than one time that Melbourne Victory is scoring off the back of it. She's trying to pick the ball up and, and turn straight away. Brooke Spence has it's been excellent in defence. Well, Russell, a little bit of room, but oh, they're offside. They're both offside. The flag goes up. Crummer and also Gielnick offside. Gielnick surrendered. She knew it. Yeah, as you mentioned, I think two, both of those players, you can see Brewer stopped her run. Good defence from her. Wheeler battling for possession. Oh, it's all on the line. The Melbourne victory. Threatening to put a, another knife in the back of Brisbane Roar at this venue as they did in the grand final last year. Jackson, nice touch from Christine Nan. They've got you know, some players, good exponents of that one touch. Quickly likes to drop back. Christine Nan from the United States is also uh, very adept on the ball. And playing a lot of times back to goal. Tamika Butts looking for the sighter. Everyone lost it, but Hannah Brewer. Uh, she valiantly tries to keep it in. Throw in Brisbane. Expense. But has Gilnick in the centre. And uh, Devanna comes away. But goes across. She cruises past Butt. Now looks up. She has to go on her own. Carol comes to crowd her out. Oh, well, the pass almost found its way through to go. No harm done. It's at the feet of Barnes. Again, they're tight upon each other, these two teams. Barnes on the turn, Nan. Little outside of the left foot. Only finds her opposite number. And Wheeler punches the ball forward. Crummer, not effective with her pass. Jackson intervened. And it's hooked away. Treats to checker. Gilnick comes. High crowds in the middle of the park. Gorry just let it trickle away. Jackson with a spirited chase back. Good effort. Barnes. And the pass is not finding the mark, but that's due to that congestion. It's heavy traffic in the middle of the park. Devanna wants the return pass, so they get a free kick for the push in the back. Easy call there for the referee. Uh, there were a couple of uh, really crucial tackles. Steph Catley especially made there. Razzo had a lot of space out right. Emma, come on, come on. It's the last thing the Melbourne victory want. Christine Nan. Angra again playing well off a line outside of the six yard box. And hoisted high to the far post, looking for Devanna. Barnes, Goad, hooked clear by Crummer. Brisbane just caught back on their heels at the moment. Tense moments in this match. And Polkinghorn. But she finds Butt with a well-directed pass, laying it off to Crummer. That's good, initially, from Polkinghorn. Now Crummer squares it back to Carroll, gives her a bit of work to do. And uh, not good in the end. Barnes streams forward. And 
there was a, a battle too, Quigley. One on one, Polking Horn trying to drive the team forward. Another misdirected ball this time, intercepted by Reed. Goad in and away. And then nipping at her heels. Nick dragged back by Crummer, butts almost away. No trouble for Bree Davy. And both these sides trying to thread the needle. Difficult times. Plenty of intense marking. Not too many opportunities. It might be right for a Lisa Devana runaway to break the game apart. She's involved in a period of frustration herself as now Gilnick chases. But Catley has her for pace. And uh, Alex for the safety of the edge of the field, Stephanie Brands. Any, uh, any attention on the on the warm-up bench yet? No, I'm afraid all the subs are still sitting down, but I've got a very special guest who's sat down next to me, and we might just let this uh, play go, Wilco, and then you can come back down and find out who it is. Absolutely. We'll look forward to that. Spence were caught by Catley's foot. Spence just uh, retained her feet. Ten and a half gone in the second half. No further addition. And that's a harmless throw. That's an old chase, but it'll be gone. Oh, my goodness. That was close. Hannah Brewer is trying to guide it across Russo with a, with a pretty good chase, although... Uh, in the end, she gave away the free kick Razzo's, uh, for the push. I don't know what that call was for. Oh, a little it's done push. well to actually keep that in. <laughs> Devanna can't find her way through. Well, watch uh, the... Oh, they're both, both offside. Gielnick uh, puts it home, but she's two metres offside. Well, let's take this opportunity to go down to Stephanie Brands to talk a bit of Asian Cup, Steph. Absolutely. It's all action stations on the pitch. And for the man next to me, it's certainly a very busy time. CEO of the uh, Lowcock for the Asian Cup 2015, Michael Brown. Welcome onto ABC, the free-to-air partner. There's my first plug for the Thank Asian Cup. <laughs> Thank you, Steph. And we're very proud of our partnership with ABC. They've been wonderful in the support and uh, look forward to taking the game to many, many millions of people across Australia. Well, it's great to have you here with uh, such a full show. Uh, do tell us, we're just over 50 days out. How are you tracking? We're tracking well. We um, obviously would love the event to be on tomorrow. We're ready. We're, all of our five venues are in place. Our venue staff are in place. And we're looking forward to hosting 16 of the top countries across Asia to uh, Asia's biggest sporting event. And with over 800 million people watching on television, we're looking forward to getting it right. Yeah, it's certainly huge and the biggest thing to happen to football in this country, uh, in fact, ever, probably. So do tell us, how's the community uptake been? You're still looking for some volunteers, correct? Yeah, look, we, we've, um, we've got a large contingent of volunteers required for our event, uh, over 1,300 across each of the host cities, and we've still got a couple of spaces left in Melbourne, Sydney and Brisbane, particularly for people who would like to be involved with face-to-face -face contact with our visitors. We've got some driving positions. Um, you get, we provide the car, we provide the petrol. You get to drive around <laughs> the VVIPs. If you're interested, please uh, let us know or go to our website, afcasiancup.com. Um, and, of course, we're looking for some people for guest relations, people with specific skills and meet and greet around hotels hotels and airports because we want to showcase Australia. This is a fabulous event for us. We're well known for being a, uh, for being a happy country. It's, a, it's summertime for us, it's festival time and we want to show people a great time. So if those volunteers are interested, please come along and say hello. We'd love to place you in our program. So a big smile and go to the website, is that right? Yeah, go to our website, to afcasiancup.com. It has all the information there, ticketing, uh, volunteers, but everything you'll need to know. And uh, certainly we're looking forward to uh, broadcasting those Australian games. We'll have a daily highlight show. Uh, we start off, of course, with the Japan game on Tuesday. Uh, you'll be watching as intently as anyone, I imagine. Yes, it's, it's, a, it's a big game. It's obviously the last showcase for the Socceroos before the Asian Cup. It's a wonderful opportunity for them to uh, prepare and obviously we want to get as much coverage out of that event for, uh, to make the Asian Cup successful. But, of course, the games are, uh, will be live um, um, on uh, ABC from the quarterfinals and, of course, ABC Radio is also our preferred uh, our host broadcaster. So um, we're looking forward to a great coverage across that. Um, and, you know, this is, a, this is an amazing event um, for, Asian, for Asian sport. This is their biggest event. It's the biggest football event we've ever hosted in this country. So it's a great opportunity for people to get behind it. And, uh, of course, it's uh, a, a situation where Ange Postacoglu is still tinkering with his side as the, uh, uh, the ref shows a yellow card there. I think it was to Katrina Gorry there. We'll just have a look at that tackle before we come back to you, Michael. 
Yeah, there we go, Katrina Gori coming in underneath, perhaps a little bit late. And uh, as you can see, the battle on the field is very, very intense. We'll talk about Katrina Gori in a minute because she's had a part to play in Asian football this week. Uh, but Michael, how important is it to you that the Socceroos go through deep into the tournament? Because Anne just been tinkering with this side and uh, we're still not quite sure how that final squad is going to play out. Anne just been very clear that he's using these matches to test his team and work out what the best format is for the Asian Cup, so I've got every confidence and uh, he assures me that, um, as he has publicly, that um, they, um, they are very keen to do well and we look forward to them uh, going deep into the tournament. It's just non-stop on the pitch, Michael. I've got one more question for you. Uh, Katrina Gorry, how pleasing is that to see with the focus on Asian football to see one of our players nominated for Player of the Year? It's just fantastic that we're getting recognition. You know, we saw the great uh, performance of the West City Wanderers in the Champions League. And, of course, the Asian Cup's about men and women uh, joining together. It absolutely is. Michael Brown, thank you for your time. We have to go back to the action on the pitch. Can't wait for the Asian Cup and all the best. Thanks, Steph. Appreciate it. Well, this could be a hammer blow. As we see here, the... This is a back pass. A little back pass. And this is an indirect free kick as a result at close range. Gee, this is a moment. It could be the spear. Brisbane try and marshal the defences. They're on the line. It's really just a square ball to a quickly, isn't it? And she'll just uh, thrash it home, wouldn't you say? Or, or... Uh, we'll get to see. Thank you. Imagine with Nan on the ball that... She'd probably be in the best position to be able to have it, but really, is she going to drive it or try find top corners? Everybody's back on the line. You can see Razzo's in the middle picking up quickly. Well, a massive chance now for Melbourne victory. Thanks very much to Michael Brown and Stephanie Brantz. But uh, the back pass <laughs> and accepted by the keeper has now given Melbourne a chance to take the lead. There's still time to go. Kate Jakowicz lying down the law. So it's Devanna and Nan. She's going to have to take a touch on its way to goal. Razzo needs to be the 10 metres. Well, they better to hold their ground, charge out. There's the touch, Nan, over. A oh, real opportunity, and you can see the restless nature of the man in the hot seat, Joe Montemuro. You can, you can see Kim Carroll should have done better with that, really should have dealt with it. You put that out for a corner, you just get, get rid of it, get rid of it uh, out of that dangerous area, and good enough to roll that back to Anger. As you see here, Anger has put a lot of pressure on that ball running out. There's, there's such an interesting uh, situation when that happens. It's not something that you train for, and... It's actually quite foreign to, to most players. But Nan, you would have backed her to put the shot on target. She spooned it over from close range. Easy to do. And now, a key change for Brisbane Roar. And one of the youngsters comes on. It's not Beard. Sonny Franco. It's another young player in Angela Beard. And, uh, she's a player of great quality as well. Another youngster. Checker. Barnes. Well, Melbourne, just for the moment, holding sway. Quigley, another good touch from Quigley. So she was under pressure in turn. 27 minutes to go. What is the path for Brisbane Roar? At the moment, Melbourne seems to be the team gathering the confidence and the continuity and they're spending quite a bit of time camped at the other end. Have they got this goal to break it apart? Hocking Horn trying hard to lead from the front as she often does. The captain just an absolute workaholic on the field and relenting in her desire. Now Nan with another bite, almost. She wins the... No, she doesn't. It's a goal kick. First touch for Beard. I'm not, I'm not sure if it's too, too early to go uh, for three at the back for Brisbane Raw, but that change with Beard. I'm not sure if Popovich was struggling with injury coming on, not playing too many minutes throughout the season. 
it just uh, it's a matter of time before they do have to push an extra forward into the midfield and then when will we see Sonny Franco come on well, pretty soon you'd imagine obviously Vedrana Popovic succumbing to the, the illness that she came into the game with she gave her all over 60 odd minutes and Melbourne doing all the pressing and it's taken out of play by Beard. Speculative ball downfield. Also did pretty well. Knows not where it is, and it's just hook forward. Ideal that it's not going to do the job. Marasso chases. Checker keeps it cool. Polking horn. And Devanna, who's recovered from a little bit of a knock a few minutes ago, she chases with great intent. Checker, Brewer. Nan. And a harmless keeper's ball. Well, Nadine Ungara picking up that back pass too. She might have been a little more perceptive, uh, you could say, for one with such experience, but uh, just a lapse of concentration in the heat of the moment. You yeah, good point. forgive her that. Good point. Uh, you could see it, it probably started with Kim Carroll being in two minds whether to put that out for a corner and, or put it out for a uh, out for a throw-in, which would be the better option, and she's kind of done something in between. I can tell you we are going to uh, see a substitution, but uh, once again, it's not Sunny Franco, it's Aisha Norrie that's going to come on, and uh, I think we'll see Emily Gilnick make way. Thank you, Steph. Well, while she, I'll keep you happy. I'll tell you, Sunny Franco <laughs> is warming up on the sideline, so uh, it's uh, <laughs> undoubtedly just a matter of time. See, uh, Norrie will probably go in the midfield, holding midfield, they'll be able to push. Kim Cole for what I imagine or put her into the back line at back three. Carol hulking horn. Tamika Butts is playing deep. And what a more forward that she's trying to retrieve and uh, get them going forward. Tamika Butt. She's the goal scorer. But, uh, she hasn't been in range and the Melbourne, there's the measured pass quickly to Devanna. They've combined before the flag stays down. Hustling in his nan. And uh, Devanna waits for the troops to arrive. She plays it back to Quigley, looking for a, a turn. And a little audacious back heel. Goat chases Tamika Butt. Working feverishly to keep them at bay. But Brisbane just a little bit flat footed at the moment. And they're facing finals oblivion. And if the score remains the same, they want to be pushing forward. He yeah, lays it off to Crummer, neat pass. Crummer, the ball inside was a beauty to Russo. Puts on the afterburners. Haley Russo, clear shot at goal. Over she goes. There it was. A movement bristling with importance and enthusiasm. Look at that acceleration from Haley Rasso. It was there at a mercy. Oh, she'd have it again. She'd put it low, low into a corner. The pace in which she ran with that ball put herself in a great position to be able to pull the trigger. And uh, really, Melbourne Victory players just passing her on. No, no one really going to the ball. She's really been their shining light today. We see uh, Isha Nori come in to the midfield. Emily Gilnick off. We see with that Tamika Butt going top on the right. Kramer up in the middle. Along with the confirmation of the uh, Brisbane substitution, it's uh, going to be the first one for Joe Montemurro's side as well. Hannah Brewer is going to come off. And uh, very shortly, we're going to see Ella Mastrantonio coming on. Thanks, Steph. Man, man. Well, we see uh, victory go as a, a three back, as we did last time we got to see him on the TV match against Perth. Devanna to Catley, weaving in and out. Catley through. Catley has the shot. Across the face of goal. She ploughed a great drive into the net from a similar position against Perth. There was no goal for offside. Here, once she'd done all the burrowing, she found herself onside, looked up, the shot just wide. Oh, she's just hooked it a little bit too much. 
who was on track and then just taking that swing to the right. I think everybody on the bench was up, thinking that she possibly have that near post. Angra was, was tied on the right-hand side. And you know, Master Antonio adding a bit of a steel to the defence at an important time in the game. And Brewer's done uh, plenty of work. She might be carrying a little bit of an injury. But Master Antonio, it's exactly like for like, but uh, it's not too bad in terms of work rate and poise over the ball. Master Antonio will not let this team down, that's for sure. Well, this is basically now the, the starting lineup that we've seen the majority of the season. We see Ella screening, Ella Master Antonio screening the back line with Lauren Barnes back at central defensive to position. Oh, now, is it going to bounce clear for Devanna? Look at the pace of Devanna. Spence has a work cut out and gives away the free kick in the tangle. Brooke Spence and a yellow card goes her way again. Oh, she knew the danger. There was a tangle. There was an octopus-like grab. And Devanna is the recipient of the free kick. And Brooke Spence, the yellow card. You can see she's so hard to defend with that speed and a close ball touches and Brooke Spence lucky was actually outside the box. Lisa Devanna, again the dynamic duo over the ball. Christine Nan has added a good dimension to this side and has certainly come into her own today. Christine Nan, can she come up with the, the play here? Maybe the looping ball to the far post. Well, they all look set up for a set play here. Now, it's Nan. Looking to poke it in near post. Trying to fox them. And again, that uh, exasperation of the opportunity lost. There, were a lot of, there was a lot of movement in the box here. And while everybody's attention was there, she's gone for a sneaky near post shot. Gorry hanging way, way deeper as well. And, uh, Brisbane playing with Marissa Crummer in the high striking role currently. Tamika Butts out on the right. And Carroll's moves a little bit to forward. Norrie's in the midfield and chasing now. And uh, the back pass, a comfortable one from Barnes. And Brisbane looking a little devoid of ideas currently. 18 minutes to go. It'll be a throw into Melbourne. Well, Sonny Franco waiting for her moment to be introduced to hopefully have an impact. Catley, the dancing feet in turn. Gorry surges. Now Gorry releases. Norrie measures the pass. Here's Russo with a shot. Oh, knocked over by. The keeper, Bree Davey, she got a touch to it. It was a splendid save, but Russo is the player most likely with a goal and two possibilities. This was a great effort, and there was the touch from Davey. It was a beauty. Oh, I loved everything about this play. Razzo's first touch, the save from Bree Davey. Look at the pace in which Razzo attacks this ball. The first, first touch right inside, setting herself up for the shot, and then Bree Davey tipping it over. Tamika Butt looking for the mark. And uh, Davey was looking to push a player out of the way to get a clear grab on the ball. The referee said, let's play on. The release to Catley. And Goad takes back by Crummer. And now all of a sudden, there seems to be a little more urgency in the Brisbane Raw method. And Russo. She's not going to be the one who makes way for Sonny Franco, for sure. She's been an absolute thorn all day. Hayley Russo, three glorious chances, one taken, one missed, and one saved. Oh, she's been really good today. To see Biddy go hit the ground here. I think we, if we do see Sonny Franco come on, it, it'll probably be for Crummer. Melbourne challenging. Quigley and Devanna, that partnership going well up forward. Neat skill from Master Antonio and the release. That's a beauty as well. And Devanna lurking in space wide on the right. 
Brings it back in field. The searching ball to Goad. Can she get the shot on goal? Goad of the dancing feet. Wins the corner kick. Melbourne. Pressure up on Brisbane. 15 and a half to go. And Nadine Angara, 36 years of age, just in the last four days. Celebrated a birthday as well. As we watch now. Nan to the far post. Who's there? Not a clear by Polkinghorn. Only as far as Catley. Back to Pastor Antonio calling it. It's the pass out to Barnes. Throw into Brisbane. But they're definitely at the wrong end of the park currently. You going to see a change, Steph? I think we certainly are. And uh, uh, Sonny Franco, much to your joy, is going to be taking the field. And uh, here's she... Tamika Butt. Tamika Butt streams. She holds it up. Can't get the power on the shot. And the chase back from Catley was... Uh, a beauty, it needed to be made, but Tamika Butt trying to shoot from long range. Sorry, Steph, but Butt was uh, on the prowl and uh, she just stalled in a stride, looked up and she was a little bit too far out, but you can put that down as well to the pressure from Steph Catley and the chase back. Absolutely, if she doesn't put that, sh that pressure on, Tamika Butt takes that to goal and Brie Davy needs to make a one-on-one -on -one save. Carol. Straight out of play from Polkinghorn. Nerves, there are plenty of them. Well, here's your substitute, and uh, it's actually going to be Natasha Wheeler that comes off, and finally Sonny Franco taking the pitch. Well, Sonny Franco, this live wire attacker. She scored the goal to draw it level against Melbourne up in Brisbane several weeks ago. She scored seven up in the qualifiers. Six in one game, that 19 mil victory. And now she comes back onto the field to try and make an impact. The number 18, Checker, hoists the spinnaker. Go chasing. And got involved as well. Brisbane Raw now playing in a 4 3 3. Kim Carroll's dropped back into the back four. See the ball end up where she wants to, but she uh, pressures her opponent and finds it at the feet in turn. And, uh, doing plenty of work and making life difficult for Angela Beard at the back as the smiling Caitlin Friend about to make her introduction to the park as well. 13 minutes to go. If the score remains this way, She's another two who have just had a birthday. Caitlin Friend, just four days ago, so some celebrations in the ranks. But uh, she's going to be brought back on the field. The near post ball knocked away. Is that going to be for a corner? It's a corner kick going to Melbourne. Brisbane thwarted currently. And Christine Nan about to step up. Jackson, Catley. Jackson goes to the near post. It goes to Barnes. A little tickle on. Mestre Antonio. Saw a name in lights. It spooned it over. She really just couldn't keep this down. It had enough power on it, as you can see. Just leaning back a little bit too far. Really, really looking forward to seeing what kind of form Caitlin Friend is in. Last time we seen her was last year. She's been over in the English League playing for Notts County. Nine appearances over there. Reed, good work to Nan. The through ball to Quigley. Gord almost bounces. Will it matter? There's the touch. There's the goal. What a goal! What an introduction! Nan spears it 
into the back of the net, Melbourne win. Christine Ned with her second of the season made no mistake. And she sighed through the centre. And look who starts this play. It's Christine Nan. Look, little touch here, one touch. Lucky there from Quigley, but making that run beyond the back line to be able to pick this ball back up and put it in the back of the net. Excellent one-two football from Melbourne Victory. That is a super goal, a great builder. Christine Nan scores. A meaningful goal for Melbourne. Brisbane now have to score twice to remain in the finals race. And that, at the moment, is a forlorn hope. Higher down is Russo. Uh, that, that was beautiful play from Melbourne Victory. Really haven't been able to penetrate, especially through the middle of the defence. Brisbane have been very solid the majority of this match. You can see Nan really earning her right to get through that defence. Clash off the ball. Well, we'll get a better look this time. It just uh, seems to have been a, a step on in a 50-50 situation. She's picked up Lisa Devana's foot on hers. Oh, Lisa Devana, the yellow card in the exchange. Melbourne victory looking for only their second win over Brisbane in the history of the W League. They beat them last year. Have Brisbane got a final couple of statements to make. The balance of the second half, though, apart from that Russo shot, you'd have to say, well, they're offside up there. You'd have to say that Melbourne has really had the better of play in the, the second half. And Brisbane facing finals oblivion now. Trail by two to one. And Joe Montemura is watching the uh, play unfold very, very closely. He did have Caitlin Friend poised to come on for Rachel quickly, but uh, in light of the goal and uh, the events have just unfolded, he's asked her to sit down for a few minutes. Well, this will impact if the score remains the same on the, the table as well. Melbourne victory. It's an important win for them. We've uh, concentrated quite a bit on Brisbane, but uh, Melbourne make their chances of making the semi-finals very very good indeed oh and this uh that's not a good look that uh, looked to be a little bit of a groin twinge there for tamika but it's hopefully uh, not too important carol uh, melbourne now just losing confidence with that lead christine Nan. She's uh, scored a couple of goals. It's been a, a great introduction uh, for Christine Nairn this year to the W League. The cross from Spence. Karama underneath it. Back to Gorry, willing to get the shot on. Now she shoots, lines it up, but doesn't ricochet favourably. Well, in turn now, here's Franco darting forward. And the tackle's made. Still going to stay in. Franco looking to win the corner kick. Goad and Franco teammates up in Asia come arm to arm as opponents. Seven to go. Well, the substitution I told you about before, Wilco, looks like it's happening now. Rachel Quigley coming off. Caitlin Friend coming back on for the victory. Well, that's a great innings from Rachel Quigley. Lots of divine touches throughout the game, a goal as well, Joe Montemuro. And assisted in the second goal. Yes, indeed. So, Caitlin Friend. Things are suddenly starting to look rosy for Melbourne. As I was saying, if uh, they manage this victory, they will move up to 17 points. And they'll, on goal difference, leap over. Sydney FC in the second place. Russo, though, still uh, willing to make a statement. Back it goes, and the shot from Norrie goes high wide and not so handsome. Oh, I really like this turn from Razzo here. Pace to burn, and she's really just sucked Ellie Reed in and basically used her body so well to, to turn off her and then run at the defence. Didn't result in anything, but she's been very busy 
doing similar runs like that today. She's been excellent, outstanding for Brisbane Raw. Pressing Mastrantonio, tackling back Reed with a first time ball downfield. Okay. Tidied up by Beard. Out of play. So the clock as well as Melbourne, a massive enemy for Brisbane Raw, trailing by two to one. They led early, they haven't added. And then after two minutes of play, it looked rosy then. Ball now, they're playing onside. A brave little bit of keeping from Bree Davey, diving at the feet of the advancing Sonny Franco and Larissa Crummer. So a heavy under-19 Asian contingent in operation for Brisbane Raw. So they call on the youngsters to try and dig them out of the hole. Not a back by Spence. That's your cue to reset. That's your cue to reset. It's an exciting time for Australian football to know that uh, some of these younger players, especially the young Matildas, are, are propping up a lot of the W League teams. You can see the likes of Kellen Knight and Laura Alloway stepping out. Two young Matildas are in. Good chase forward from Jackson. Now, oh, what a step over. She's dragged down Jackson by Polkinghorne and a free kick. And another delightful area as far as Melbourne victory is concerned. She's used her body well here, Jackson, as you'll see. She's rolled off. Claire Polkinghorne and you know, to team the foul. Christine Nan, her other goal was from uh, the set play. It was a sparkling free kick to go with that goal in running play, which was a beauty. She got another one up her sleeve to uh, seal it in style, Master Antonio. But it's going to be Nan who loops it. Oh my goodness, it wasn't far away, but Ungra probably had it covered. Nearly 87 minutes gone. This had the power, but just not the accuracy. Oh, it actually had the curve, and it was curving back in. Just seen earlier before Angra played the ball out for the goal kick, screaming at a defence, looking for an option, and no one really showing. Friend, Master Antonio. Beaky Goad. Square ball is a good one to Jackson, and it made a good run up the centre. Making the direct route. And now Melbourne just freewheeling, ball at the feet. Uh, a ball out of play, throw in. Russo. Fought her endeavour today. She's been highly spirited on the ball, scored early. And another shot which might have gone in, but for a great save by Davey. Spooned one over, but she's been a constant thorn. Apart from her, she's been having offered too much forward. Exactly right. Even aside from the goal, she's tried things today. So when she had the ball, she's really tried to make something of it and create things for a team. And her runs into the box have always had purpose. It's just not been a 90-minute performance here from Brisbane. And it was Ankara again, playing right fullback. Hooked downfield by Lauren Barnes. Well, this is a moment that's just about over for Brisbane Raw for this season. Of 2014. Competition finishing early, not a 2014-15 season due to the Asian Cup. Gorry robbed by Devanna. In turn taken down by Carroll. But uh, releases it wide right on the left to Russo. And she sends the speculator in. And Kramer, they were queuing up. Numbers back for Melbourne. Carroll. But the first time ball to Gorry. That 
Weight of numbers for Melbourne victory, and Beaky goes in the clear, and she sends it away to Devanna, but Unger are ready for the run. Oh, well read from Angra. She was already starting on the 18-yard line. She needed to. This time, about to beat Brisbane. And we've got three minutes. Three minutes left. So retreating to try and pick up possession. Melbourne have it again. Slip sliding away for Jackson. But playing a very deep role considering her goal scoring prowess. And Carroll back to in retreat. And Brisbane, you'd have to say, just going through the motions at the moment. It's been a, a disappointing season for them considering the team. Populated heavily by Matilda's current. And they have missed, uh, you'd have to say, Elise Kellon Knight today and Laura Alloway. That was always going to be a tough task. Elise Kellon Knight with a calf strain and Laura Alloway with an ankle complaint that uh, resurfaced. To be, to be fair though, Wilco, this is probably uh, the typical match of Brisbane this season. It's, it's not been a 90-minute 90, 90 performance and you only really see glimpses of what they're capable of and in this season especially everybody the other teams have actually stepped up and provided benchmarks and especially Perth this season they've, they've definitely provided the benchmark and Brisbane are way off that at the moment uh, and in my opinion probably don't deserve to be in the top four so uh, Melbourne winning today I don't think Melbourne have been outright better team today but they've been better when it mattered in front of goal. Just a minute to go. And the chase. And Devanna go. If she brought down, it's going to be a corner kick. Devanna highly spirited again. Thrashing after the ball. The birthday girl this week. Look and at the uh, metres she's made up here. Claire Polkingall thought she had a lot more time than she actually did. Well, they queue up. For one last thrust for Melbourne victory. This might even be the last play of the game. Just 20 seconds to go. And Brisbane come away with it. It's laid back to Master Antonio. Catley was singing for it wide on the left. Nan just produces another direct ball. Out on the right to Caitlin Friend. And she just soaks up the clock with some guile. Stands over the ball. And the goal kick is given. That should be it. Kate Jakowicz looks at the clock. Angara with a forlorn kick out. A pivotal moment in W League history. Brisbane will not make the finals for the first time in the competition history. They lose to Melbourne now. Two goals to one. It's a graveyard twice. The Lakeside Stadium for Brisbane Roar. In the grand final last year, they were beaten by Melbourne. This year, when they had to win today to keep their hopes alive, they go down by two goals to one. Here we see there wasn't too much between them. And as I mentioned earlier, they were just much more clinical in front of goal. Melbourne victory. They took the chance that they had that they needed to and now find themselves equal with Canberra on 17 on the ladder. And, and Brisbane, as you mentioned, out, out of the final four contention. Uh, it's really sad for them, but I'm not a uh, no doubt that they'll bounce back next year. 
We're going to go down to Stephanie Rance with the Westfield Player of the Match. And this week it is goal scorer Christine Ned. Congratulations. Just a second win in the entire history of the league over Brisbane. Three points on the board. A Player of the Match performance from yourself. Is it cause for triple celebration or is it just relief? <laughs> uh, it's a little bit of both. Brisbane's a great side. Um, you know, we had a lot of chances that we could have put away. Uh, fortunately, we, fortunately, we put it away when it count, counted. Um, but can't say enough about Brisbane and how much they've done this season. They're a tough team to play against and we're happy to get the three points. One game left in the regular season against Newcastle and that could possibly decide that last spot in the semis and the International Club Championship. How are you approaching that? You know, we're just focusing on ourselves, um, playing to each other's strengths and putting a full 90 minutes together. Um, at times we can be the best team in the league and, you know, at times we're, we're not the best in the league. So uh, putting, you know, each half together to complete a 90 minute game is our number one focus right now. Work today. Good luck for the rest of the season. Thank you very much. Christine Nan with uh, sparkling efforts, and this was the moment early on that gave Brisbane heart. Haley Rasso with a fine strike in the second minute. What about the response from Brisbane at the back end of the half? It was Devanna to Quigley, beautifully taken, and then the critical moment in the 80th minute. The uh, worked move with Nan chasing onto the ball, thrashing it home for the 2-1 lead. That was to be the final score, confirming the results in round 10. Sydney 5, Adelaide 0, Newcastle and Canberra 3 all. Perth 5, the Wanderers 0, and Melbourne, the champions, leading Brisbane 2-1. Perth, Melbourne move into second with a plus one goal difference over Sydney. Canberra in fourth position. And then now with the task in front, Newcastle and Adelaide, Brisbane and the Wanderers all out of it. But the four looks to be secure. Maybe not. Let's go down to Stephanie Brands. Yeah, thank you very much, Peter Wilkins. Full time here at Lakeside Stadiums and it's curtains for Brisbane Roar's season, but Melbourne victory march on. And of course, there's plenty still for football fans to enjoy, not just the W League on ABC, but also we've got international football. And on Tuesday night, we'll bring you live coverage of the Socceroos final hit out before the Asian Cup. Australia take on cup holders Japan on their home turf. Check your local guides for action from the Nagai Stadium in Osaka. That's, of course, the prelude to the biggest football tournament Australia has ever hosted. We'll bring you all the Socceroos matches as well as a daily highlight show from the Asian Cup 2015. Before then, Hoops fans were into round six of the WNBL and the Melbourne Boomers are next up against Adelaide. Tune in to ABC at 3pm Saturday for that match and the following day it's the penultimate round of the W League as the Lady Reds welcome the Wanderers to Adelaide Shores once again. Join us at 3pm on ABC. So just two rounds to go. Good luck to the victory as they continue on. For all of you, we look forward to seeing you on Tuesday night. Thanks for your company today. Bye-bye for now.